Look at verse 24. Joshua 24, 24. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. Now, ain't that funny? Apparently, God was speaking to them too, and they understood the Lord. I heard so many different messages about voices, I ain't going to get you at me. But God spoke to me. You know, people, you know, there's just a certain relationship you got to get with God. Because I was in the crazy house. And I watched crazy folk do some crazy stuff. Now, granted, you know, I was in there for trying to commit suicide, but there were some nuts up in that joint. Yeah. And some of them deserved the padded wall. But I also met some of the most insightful, spiritual, intellectual people I've ever seen in my life. Their spirits were so free that they saw angels. And I was getting jealous. I know you can see an angel up here with you. You know, do walk around and I see people say they were nuts. But we would be praying and say, Lord, there's an angel in that corner. There's an angel in that corner. There's an angel, and I'm like, where? I don't see him. But again, did I doubt him? No. Because everybody called him a nut. Right? Nobody would talk to him. But he would talk to me. And then finally, we sat down that man with the most intellectual person. He said, Warren, the only reason why I talk to you is because you were humble enough to listen to me. And that's when I started learning that crazy people only want somebody to hear them. That's all they need is your listening ear. That's all they need. Right. So I didn't think about the people, they think I'm crazy, not crazy, just so that they can have something to talk about. But let me tell you who I really am, Warren. Okay. Excuse me. Oh. See? You never know. Amen? Look at uh, verse 15 of that same chapter. Here it is. And if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord, hello, who didn't accept Jesus, if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day. Hello. Who? <laughs> who you will serve? Whether the gods, see lowercase g mean the devil. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But watch this. But as for me and my house, we will do what? Serve the Lord. Choose you who this day whose army you won't be in. Mm -hmm. And if you struggle after you leave here today, just say, God, I'm in your army. Help me. Yeah. I know the weapons. Help me learn these new ones. Because I know they're going to make me successful. Help me, Lord, to humble myself. Help me, Lord, to submit. Help me, Lord, to obey. Help me, Lord, to pray. Because yeah. I can't do it without you. My flesh is nasty and wretched, and it wants what it wants. Because I'm prideful and selfish. Help me kill this king called proud. Amen. 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 I'm on a special ops assignment, Lord. Help me. Boy, we got quite a guy. Go to Jeremiah chapter 26. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 26. Y'all get anything I want to say? No. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That'll tell me whether to read part two. Jeremiah 26. Twenty-six, verse thirteen. It says, "Therefore, now amend your ways." What does that mean? Change your ways. Make a conscious choice. Amend your ways and your doings, and obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the Lord will repent him of the evil that he has pronounced against you. Don't you want to turn God's head around Amen. when He is ready to send Amen. you to? Yeah. Amend your ways, and God will turn away. For what he has pronounced upon you. And what does everybody, I like Ron saying all the time, if I'm a deserving hell sinner. And God changed his mind for me going to heaven. Amen. Change his Thank mind. You, and all you got to do is submit. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the truth and submit. Amen? Amen. So amend your ways. First Peter 4. Back to First Peter 4. Just a couple more, y'all. I thought I'd get to four of them today. 1 Peter 4, 17. Ron? <laughs> Wait a minute, I think I got it. Nope. Let me borrow you by the way again. 1 Peter 4, 17. You got it right there? Okay. 
1 Peter 4, 17 says, For the time has come. Is that right, man, right? Yeah. For the time has come that judgment must begin where? At the house of God. Where is judgment going to begin? At the house of God. And who's the house of God? You are. The church. Call out one. Call out what? The darkness into his marvelous light. At the house of God. If it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the good news of God? Amen. So if judgment begins with us who are born again, what do you think is going to happen to you who don't receive it? Good God of Christ. Woo! That's scary. 2 Corinthians. Back to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And we're going to look at that real quickly again. I'm sorry, He just got back to speak. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I know my preacher friends are saying, why don't you just bring this good Bible? Because this is the one the Lord told me to bring. Because this one been through crack houses, hard dens, any sin you want to name, it went with me. That's why I'm bringing it. You see how beat up it is? It's been smoked on. <laughs> Cried on. All kinds of things been done on this Bible. How could you bash for me the Bible like that, brother? Because it's written in my heart. That ain't nothing but a book. God had to write all that in my heart while I was messing up. Amen. He had to let me know, don't worship that book. Worship me. Those are my instructions. I had to stop worshiping that. Because I really didn't care if I'm smoking crack while I'm reading it. I didn't care if it's right next to me while I'm laying with some woman. But when it got in my heart, Come on, I couldn't lay with that one. Amen. When it got in my heart, the crack didn't taste the same. Amen. 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 But the book was evidence of where it went from. It went from me ripping it apart to becoming a part of me. That's a representation of the sin I've been through. Amen. Amen. Woo! Deep for me. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 10, starting at verse 4 again. For the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God's are pointing out the strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that is also self against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let's keep reading, because there's some place I want to go here. And having in the readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is what? Fulfilled. When your obedience is fulfilled. Time to obey, people. Verse 7. Do you look on things after the outward appearance? Hello, you see the question mark? Are you looking on people and things on an outward appearance? Just like I told you about the guy in the crazy house. If I had looked at him on his outward appearance, I would have never saw his spirit. That's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. Do you know, the scripture even tells us we, we, entertain, we entertain angels in other ways. I met more angels that were probably homeless than they were in, in some fancy building. Yeah. I knew I met an angel one day. I was walking down the street and this homeless woman said, feed me because I don't give money to the homeless. Because I know what you're going to do with it. I've been there. But the Lord said, I was on welfare at the time. These are welfare stamps. I said, I take what I take you to the store and buy you something. She said, well, praise you, brother. And I took her to the store and bought her everything she wanted with the food stamps. And I had some cash, but I had planned to get high that night. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to give her my cash. Yeah. Then the Lord told me, right then and there, not going to give her some money. But when I turned around, she was and I walked outside the door. Now I'm in the city of Philadelphia. You only go one or four directions, especially in a little corner. And I look. She had disappeared. And I said, oh my God. Did I go get high that night? No, for the next day. <laughs> See? I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't get high that night. I was convicted. Yeah. But when I woke up, my flesh still said, give me some drugs. Yeah. And I still did. Yeah. She didn't go hear about it. Amen. I was convicted for a moment, but I got right back up and let the imaginations and the weapons of my warfare come back into my head, and I got high again, knowing I'm an angel. Amen. Boy, that was good. Humility. Ryan, I need 10 more minutes. Okay? Humility. Colossians 3. Number three weapon, humility. 
Colossians 3. Hope I'm not boring you. No. No. <coughs> Colossians 3, verse 12 and 13. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another. See, that's the problem. We can't forbear one another. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. <laughs> Why? If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Who has a hard time forgiving in here? I know. Me too. That's okay. At least you're honest. And you tell God every single time, God, I have a hard time forgiving. Help me. Increase my faith. Yeah. Then the Lord tells you, I'm so glad you're honest. Now Amen. you know you're not in denial. <coughs> See, denial says I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> Honesty and truth and mercy says, Father, I love the sin I'm in. Amen. I love watching porn. I love smoking crack. I love being with women. I just love it. And if you don't get off your throne and help me, I'm going to continue to be with you. Oh, now you're telling the truth. I can help you. <laughs> then he gets off his throne. But Lord, you sit there. Oh, Father, just forgive me in the name of Jesus. And I love to hear people say, Oh, Father, I'm going to shut down the I shut down the I used to speak in tongues like I'm going to go buy crack. Then after I bought it, I'll be walking in the street speaking in tongues. Like, God, I'm going to get it. But he ain't doing nothing but what God told him to do. 
Amen? Amen. Do I agree with everything? No! But if you're a real soldier, Come on, and you know who your identity is, Jesus. it don't matter what he says. You know why? Because he ain't talking to you. He's only talking to those who ain't born again. He's only talking to those who don't have a special ops assignment to obey, pray, and submit. But if you get offended and get angry, then guess what? He's talking to you. Yeah. Yeah. Now some of y'all, when you start throwing them names out there and calling you out by sin, you used to have to say, Father, I'm a new creature. Amen. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you ain't got to say it now, just say it with yourself. I pray for that man in the name of Jesus. Because I know who I am. Who are you? You're more than a copper. Who are you? You're born again. Who are you? Blessed. Who are you? Victorious. Who are you? A dad. Who are you? A son. Who are you? A, a, a minister of reconciliation. Who are you? An ambassador for his name's sake. Who are you? The son of the earth. Who are you? Look out for the things you are. Yes, sir. And you want to sit up there and let somebody tell you a devil? You come to hell? Accept who you are. You got to know who you are. If you don't know who you are, then guess what? He's right. Come on, but if you're still walking in sin, but that's what he's called to do. He's called to cast you into hell through the gospel Amen. so that you can wake up. Then God sends other preachers and teachers in there to let you know, no, wake up and know who you are. I just get so mad at that man that God just spoke to me. Don't you know who you are? He ain't talking to you. Hey, let's hear it. Amen. Buddha ain't getting you 
nowhere. Huh. Confucius ain't getting you nowhere. That's yeah, true. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jehovah ain't getting you nowhere. Oh my God. Mormon ain't getting you nowhere. Now I just offended some of you. Because you have to believe Jesus is God. Jesus is. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to have to just pick this up next week. Yeah. I need to end it with this. Go to Zephaniah. Go to your table of contents, and I'm in the, the next one. Please, you need this. If you're a real soldier, just grab this last verse. Zephaniah chapter 3, we're going to end it. Every time we teach this lesson, we're going to end this. I need whoever wants to be a soldier for the Lord to grab these verses. Zephaniah. It's the small prophet, Zephaniah, Z-E-P. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Zephaniah, Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Oh, Zephaniah. What chapter? Go to your table of contents. What chapter? It's right after Habakkuk. What chapter? What chapter? Didn't I say chapter 3, chapter 1? Repeat it, because I can hear it. See, that's the kind of leader you gotta love. <laughs> Zephaniah chapter 3, starting at verse 17. Listen, folks, here it is. Grab it. And if you ain't gonna <laughs> listen intently. Because when I asked God to help me in my flesh, this is what he reminded me of. Amen? Listen intently to how the Lord loves you. Are you ready? Starting at verse 17, it says, The Lord, thy God, is in the midst of thee. Is what? Mighty one. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with what? Joy. Can you imagine God doing this for you and over you? He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Can you imagine God singing because of you? No, man, if this is, think about it in your head. Verse 18. I will gather them that are what? Sorrowful. Woo, Jesus. For the soul of assembly, who are thee? To whom the reproach of it was a burden. For whom the shame of it was a burden. Some of you are shameful. But he's going to sing over you. It was a burden to you, but now he's going to sing. Can you imagine God singing a song for you? Woo. Keep going, 19. And behold, at that time, I will undo. I will undo all that afflict you. Oh my goodness. And I will save her that has and gather her that was driven out. How many of you been driven out? That's why you're here. You've been driven out of your homes. You've been driven out of your city. You've been driven out of your family. You've been driven out of your friendships and marriage. Are y'all boy? And I will gather her that was driven out. And I will get them praying. And fame in every land where they have been put to what? Shame. So every place they talked about you, every place they shot you down, every place they said you would be nothing. Come on now. And at that time, will I bring you again? Now look at this in me. That's why I taught a message called "Go back to the place you were stolen." Yes. That's why I fly home all the time.